Today, we're making vodka using the standard out of the box instructions that come with the T500 and turbo yeast. But you guys know me, I, I can't leave it at that. I, I have to mess with it. So, so I'm gonna try and improve on that a little bit. And then we're bringing the final boss in to find out if I did good or not. How's it going, chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. So, a little while ago, I put this video out, and I still think a lot of people kind of misunderstood what the purpose of the video was, but the, the, the thing that was overwhelmingly obvious is that there was a bunch of people that thought that I did turbo dirty by not just following the damn instructions and making it the way it's supposed to be made. And to be fair, I think there's kind of something to that. That's, that's fair enough. Now, I do understand that there's gonna be some people out there that just think I am biased against turbo yeast and I'm not gonna, you know, give it a fair shot. Yeah, well, it's true. Huh? Yeah, you heard me, you're biased and you're not gonna give it a fair go. Dude, if you just chill and give me a second, I was literally about to tell these people that I worked on this project with Still Spirits. Ah, well. Okay then. Who the hell are you anyway? You know, holding the mic, sound guy. Get! Go! I'm wearing a lapel mic. See? You're holding a broomstick and your cans aren't even plugged in. Jeez. Anyway, <laughs> this video actually is a collaboration with Still Spirits and to be honest they've been absolutely awesome to work with. So a huge, huge thank you to Still Spirits uh, for sponsoring this video and for hooking me up with some of the equipment uh, and the consumables I needed to make this video. So you're just going to say it's awesome no matter what, aren't you? Who are you people? Uh, camera guy. And you're just going to say it's awesome because they sponsored you. What? No, I, I do all my own camera work still. And you're holding the GH5. I bet that thing doesn't even have a battery or a, or a card in it, does it? Yeah, I thought so. I mean, I kind of get it. But that's literally the reason I'm bringing the final boss in. He doesn't know what's going on, and the whole point of bringing him in is to kind of make this a little more unbiased. Jeez. Anyway, should we get on to making the first product, shall we? <laughs> You're going to need something sturdy to stir with and something to ferment in. Obviously, use any bucket you like, but these ones are, to be honest, kind of handy. You're also going to need a sanitizer. My sanitizer of choice is Star San in a spray bottle. Why? Because if something gets unsanitized, it can be re-sanitized almost instantly. It's uh, also my secret to a bushy beard. You also need eight kilos of sugar. I'm using the Still Spirits branded stuff and do not forget the star of the show, the classic turbo yeast. Be careful, oh God. But while you're down there, don't forget about the turbo carbon and the two part turbo clear. The next step is to clean and sanitize your equipment. You can use all sorts of different cleaners. Just make sure that the, the objects are actually clean. You can't sanitize what isn't clean. Uh, and make sure you rinse that stuff off well. What you do not have to rinse off, however, is the star sand. If you're using star sand, this stuff's fine. Don't fear the foam, guys. Next up, you need 20 liters of water at 30 degrees Celsius in your fermenter. But the easiest way to get there is to kind of mix hot and cold water together until you edge towards the, the volume you need at the temperature you need. Uh, if the water in the fermenter is too cold, you add more boiling water. If it's too hot, you add more cold water. Pretty simple stuff. I think you get the idea, right? Next, add in your eight kilos of sugar or your four packets of Still Spirits sugar. Give it a really good stir up. We're using that much because we're aiming for 20% full yield in our fermenter. Once all of the sugar is dissolved, you can add in your turbo yeast and then your turbo carbon as well. Pop the lid back on the fermenter, fill the airlock up and let it ferment away somewhere between 18 and 30 degrees Celsius for roughly a week. Here's a quick tip guys, the only way to really know if your fermentation is finished is with one of these guys. When you think it's done, after about a week, take a reading and it should be down below one or very, very close to one. If the reading doesn't change for two days in a row, you know you've sort of plateaued out at the bottom of the fermentation and fermentation is done. Once your fermentation has finished, it's time to clear that sucker and we're gonna use the Still Spirits two-part turbo clear. <laughs> you have no idea how many times I had to say that to get it correct. Ah. Anyway, all you need to do is mix the wash up nice and vigorously to basically off-gas it, get all the CO2 out of it, whack in part A and give it another good mix. Wait for an hour, let it sit for an hour, and then gently, gently stir in 
part B just to the top. And then, wait for 23 hours. Told you it was easy. This is what it looked like beforehand. That hasn't been cleared. And this has been cleared, so big ass difference. Now, here's the deal, guys. Uh, all of this stuff is still in that bucket. It's just pancaked down onto the bottom. It's dropped out, it's precipitated out to the bottom of the bucket. Uh, so be careful with it. If you kick it, if you whack it, if you tap it, if you jiggle it around and shake it, it's all gonna come back up. It's all gonna go back into the stuff that you're gonna put into the still, uh, which kind of defeats the purpose. <laughs> Transfer your wash into the still, ideally by siphoning it. Get the still put back together, closed up, and start it heating up. After about 30 minutes of your still heating up, depending on ambient temperature, the amount of wash, so on and so forth, you're going to start noticing the temperature on the still easing its way up slowly. Uh, as soon as you see this starting to happen, you need to be watching your still like a hawk, and it is time to get the water flowing through the condenser and leave it on. So use the little valve on the hose to start dialing in the flow rate of water and what you're aiming for roughly is about 400 to 700 mils per minute. What you can do is, you know, get a measuring cup and a timer and time this out and figure out exactly what that looks like so you kind of have it in your head for next time. Uh, but if you just want a visual on what that looks like, it looks like this. Oh, note. Team, if you are in a country that is using 110 volts or actually anything less than 240 volts, you're going to have to knock that flow rate down even more because you're still, based on the, the voltage in your country, is putting less power into the pot so you don't need quite as much water to cool it down. Here's the thing guys, as the still is warming up, the temperature gauge is kind of useless. It doesn't give you any real information that's helpful but once we're up to temperature that's when we can start using it and the the magic range that we want to sit within for the the basic instructions for using a t500 is between 50 degrees and 65 degrees unless you are grossly outside the range of 50 to 65 degrees you want to be making very 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 small adjustments this thing is touchy so whenever you make an adjustment move it as little as humanly possible and then wait for a little while to see what happens on the still. Once your still is running and you got your temperature dialed in pretty quick I hope, you're going to want to measure and collect the first 50 mils of product. We're calling this stuff four shots. Uh, it's not great. You're not going to enjoy it. You're not going to feel great after you drink it. So basically we are going to chuck this stuff out. From here on in, honestly team, it's pretty much the same. Just keep babying the still, watch the temperature, check on it every now and again, make sure that it is within that range. When the still slows down and stops producing, as long as the thermometer is still within that 50 to 65 degree range, you know you're done. Distillation is done. If you're following along, congratulations for getting this far. Good work. Uh, but that does not mean we're finished. What we need to do now is we need to measure the amount, the volume that we took out off the still. And we also need to measure the ABV or the proof. And the easiest way to do that, obviously for the volume, is with a measuring cup. And to measure the ABV, we're going to use an alchemeter. Remember guys, that all of these things are calibrated at a certain temperature. So this one, let me double check before I tell you porkies. It's calibrated at 20 degrees Celsius. So that means that if the liquid is not at 20 degrees Celsius, then your reading's off uh, and you'll need to use a table to convert or you'll need to get the temperature to 20 degrees. So uh, for this one, we have a ABV of 90.5. Now what you could do is add a little water, test it, add a little water, test it, or you can just go to chasethecraft.com, go to the calculators tab, dilutions tab, uh, and use the punchier details in there and, and get an answer straight away. I need 4.987 liters of water to make this 40%. If your water's coming out of the tap and it tastes like crap, don't use that. Use some water that tastes good. We've only got one thing left to do, and that is to filter it. This video isn't going into how you load it and set it up and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I'll be doing some more videos on charcoal filtering coming up, seeing as I have the kit now and I know you guys have been asking about it. Put the spirit in up top, make sure you have something underneath to catch it and adjust the tap to get a nice slow drip. Whack the lid on and let it go for gold. This is gonna take some time guys. The slower you go, the better the filtering obviously and uh, you know, if you're putting through some volume, this might take eight hours or something. 
So there you go, it's done. The standard turbo product is finished. You can bottle it up and enjoy it at this point in time. Uh, me, obviously, I'll be saving a sample for the final boss. But like I said at the very beginning of the video, I'd like to shake things up a little bit and uh, see if we can't make this a little bit more refined. I reached out to Nick, who is the product manager over at Still Spirits, and the next nine tips and tricks I'm going to give you are a culmination of uh, all of our ideas. Uh, if anything is not mentioned or talked about, you can assume that I did it exactly the same as the first time around. Tip number one, switch the yeast up. Now, it seemed like a little bit of a stretch in terms of not sort of comparing apples with apples to completely change this and go from a turbo yeast to like a brewer's yeast or the distiller's series yeast. So I switched to the turbo pure version. Tip number two is to reduce the amount of sugar you're using. So I went from eight kilos of sugar down to six kilos of sugar, which is four packets down to three packets if you're using the Still Spirits branded stuff. Uh, and this is going to seriously, seriously reduce reduce the amount of stress on the yeast. It is going to reduce your yield as well, but I think it's worth it. Tip three is to get a whole lot more specific with the temperature of your fermentation. Now turbo yeast has a tendency to kind of run away uh, and the temperature can really spike, which means a really fast and furious fermentation. Holding it back to a specific sort of temperature, I like around 24, 25 degrees Celsius, can definitely uh, help improve the, the quality of your product at the end uh, and on the flip side getting too cold isn't great either so I used my fermentation chamber to hold it at 24 to 25 degrees celsius uh, if you don't have this kind of equipment I get it I understand but you can get really pretty creative with blankets electric blankets uh, fans ice water baths or swamp coolers Number four is temperature related as well, and that is to use temperature as your friend when you're clearing the wash. So I set my fermentation chamber down to five degrees Celsius after adding the turbo clear. And honestly, guys, the difference is not in that. You could literally read a newspaper through the stuff. It was so freaking clear. Uh, once again, if you don't have the equipment to set and forget it like this, you can get creative in all the ways I mentioned before. Number five is use double distillation to your advantage. If you already understand the concept of stripping runs and spirit runs, you get it. I didn't need to tell you, just go right ahead and do it. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, do not stress, don't worry about it. If you want to understand the theory behind it, you can check this video out up here. That'll help you out a whole lot. Otherwise, if you just want to know how to do it this time, distill the spirit once, collect everything, proof it back down to below 40%. That's important, make sure you do it and then distill it again. Number six is to add a little bit of flavor and mouthfeel into the mix, if that's what you're into. Optional, obviously. Uh, what I did was take one cup of rolled oats and one cup of ale malt. Honestly, you could use any base malt, that would be fine, uh, and macerate it in the spirit after the first distillation for 24 hours. Literally just tipped it into the jar, let it sit for a day, uh, and then after that, I strained it all out, making sure that there was no chunky bits left in it to burn in the still and then went on to the second distillation. Number seven is to run the still a little bit slower. You don't need to worry about this on the first run if you're doing the double distillation, but on the spirit run, the second run, running the still a little bit slower essentially gives the, the, the reflux column more ability to do its job properly. So you can literally do this by looking at the spout and seeing how much product is coming out of the still uh, and adjust with your water accordingly. But I know that that's kind of a relative thing like how fast is fast and how slow is slow it's weird if you haven't done it before uh, so if you just want a rough estimation of where you should be aiming for if you keep the still temperature between 45 degrees celsius and 50 degrees celsius as long as you're actually producing product you're going to be in pretty damn good shape number eight is to make much much more aggressive cuts it's awesome that we took the four shots off the first go round. that was great uh, but in my opinion we just need to be a whole lot more aggressive about this. Personally, I like to make my cuts based on my senses, on my, my smell and my taste primarily. Uh, that's a whole nother kettle of fish. If you want to get into that, there is a video up here that's going to help you out with it. If, however, you just want to get stuck into it right now for this turbo yeast, uh, if you keep that thermometer below about 52 degrees Celsius, where the still stops is going to be just fine. That'll take care of the tails, more than likely for you. On the other end of things, at the beginning, for the heads, if you take 500 mils instead of 50 mils, you're going to be in pretty good shape. I know, I get it. That's a lot of product you're missing out on. Trust me, it's going to make a big, big difference to the result, though. 
And lastly, number nine. And that is to experiment or at least consider not filtering. And the reason I say this is I think if you've done all the other steps that we've mentioned in these tips and tricks, your product is already going to be better than the last stuff we made. In fact, I'm so confident about that that I am not gonna filter my second product uh, and I'm just gonna serve it straight up to the final boss as is. It is gonna change the type of products that you create though. If you want a really crisp, clean, light feeling spirit, then maybe you do wanna filter still. Personally, I like something with a, a hint, a, a, a suggestion of flavor to it. And I enjoy a more rounded, velvety, soft mouthfeel when it comes to vodka. Now, I have two versions of the Turbo Wash, uh, but this video, is, this video is getting really long. So what I'm gonna do is next week, I will put out another video and we'll go through these nine tips and tricks and I'll kind of rank them in terms of what I think is the most through to the least important and give you a little bit more information about what I think they do to the final product. In any case, what we have at the moment is uh, bottle A, which is the standard straight out of the box version of the Turbo product, uh, and bottle C, which is the tips and tricks, the second one we made, which begs the question, what's in bottle B? Now this actually is a commercial vodka, I thought I'd throw that into the mix as a little bit of a kind of calibration. But who is the final boss? Some say he is the most qualified person in the world to call me out on my bollocks and that he has specifically crafted the shape of his facial hair to better detect the faint whiff of bullshit. Today's final boss is Ian. People at home are probably wondering why you have been selected as this video's final boss. Two reasons. Number one, Ian rather fancies a vodka. Uh, number two, is Ian was my lecturer all through photography. Uh, so he's very, very used to calling bullshit on me. So you're, you're happy to, to call bullshit to, oh, to, yeah, to, yeah. to shoot straight. Yep. Feel free to taste them at your leisure. Uh, it's a bit potatoey. Potatoey, interesting, okay. Yep, yeah, and especially the um, odor, it doesn't have that real sharp, sharp, sharp. Ooh, yep. All right, okay. so he likes B. I like B. B, B has that, that right. real alcoholic. Okay slightly fumey sort of thing. It's soft, that's very drinkable. That would probably be really good on ice, really cold. Mm, really I feel cold. you. That, that's classic to me. That was sharp, but not, it had a, 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 a deeper flavor, like I said, you said, it's an earthy sort yeah, of flavor. Yeah, right, right, right. Um, and that was, didn't taste classic vodka to me, but was, I, I you know. As intriguing. A, intriguing and nice. Right. Oh, that'd be nice for something else. When you say soft, do you mean mouthfeel, flavor? Or, uh, mouthfeel. or mouthfeel wasn't overly aggressive. This one has a slight earthiness to it, but not like this. No. And it has almost a, um, somewhere between licorice and wheat mix. Yeah, I'm getting the licorice. So a huge, huge thank you to Ian for being this week's final boss. Thank you, mate. I appreciate it. And a huge, huge thank you to the Patreons. Thank you guys. You're literally the reason I get to do this. Thanks, I really do appreciate it. I just want to set something straight too, guys, and say that Ian and I were both actively going after this stuff and looking for, like deeply and specifically looking for issues as much as we could. Um, and if a new home distiller served up any of those products to me to assess and tell them what I thought of it, to be honest, I'd, I'd be pretty, imp pretty impressed if that's what they, they came up with straight away. So trying to hold that initial spirit to a higher standard is maybe a little bit disingenuous, uh, but it does also show that if you're willing to go past that first step and put some more time and effort into it, you can totally get a better product. Also, I purposefully didn't ask Ian about the kind of vodka he likes before he came here. Uh, and all of the tips and tricks I used pushed the product towards the sort of thing that I like round, smooth, velvety, a little bit richer in mouthfeel uh, with a little bit of flavor going on there as well. Whereas I think Ian's preferences are way over here, a much more sort of volatile, clean, crisp vodka. So I'm interested, what do you guys think I should have done differently with those tips and tricks to make something specifically to suit Ian's tastes? All right guys, uh, if you enjoyed this video, you know what to do, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed before and you're enjoying the content. And of course, drop a comment in the comment section down below. Catch you next time, guys. Keep on chasing the craft. See ya.